I've been told I have Chiari malformation. What do I do? And today, and we've talked about Chiari before, but today we're going to look at MRIs of Chiari malformation. It's very fascinating. And the way I like to think of this is that when you're an embryo, your brain is made in your mother's stomach in the mesoderm. So when it's made in your, your stomach, it's sort of drug up the spinal canal like this, and you have these little tentacle, the cerebellar tonsils, as it, as it pulls into the brain, this little tentacle, like my index finger here, sticks out, and that's the cerebellar tonsil. It's just like the tonsil you have in your throat, but it's the cerebellar tonsil. It probably does something in embryo, maybe secretes antibodies, who knows, but it doesn't do anything in an adult except get in the way when it causes Chiari-1 malformation. Two types of Chiari malformation, Chiari-1 and Chiari-2. Chiari-2 is the bad one you hear about in babies. You have myelomeningocele, mental retardation, you know, hydrocephalus, just a terrible thing to have. But Chiari-1 malformation gives a bad rap. It's not near as severe. <clears throat> Most people that have Chiari-1 malformation, it's just really not that big a deal. And unless your cerebellar tonsils stick, you know, below five millimeters below the level of frame and magnum, then you know you don't really have any problems. And many times, you know, you don't have any problems anyway. So that hole in the skull that your spinal cord exits from to go to the body, so you can move your arms and legs, is called a frame and magnum. When we look at this first slide, you'll see this blue line. This is the best I could draw this line, this hole, this frame and magnum. And you see the little white line that's pointing vertical. You can see the little tip of that cerebellar tonsil is sticking below the level of frame and magnum about 4.5 millimeters. This is incidental. I get tons of consoles like this. It's read by the radiologist. Appropriately so is Chiari-1 malformation. You're four millimeters below the level of frame and magnum and you see no pressure on the brain stem. It's just incidental. Um, this next one you can see is much more profound. Um, it's sticking down about 10 or 11 millimeters below the frame of magnet. But look at the brainstem next to it. You see the white arrow is, press, is pointing at this cerebellar tonsil that's sticking below the level of frame of magnet. You see the brainstem is slightly distorted. Um, this person definitely needed surgery. They presented with dizziness and unsteady and balance issues. This next one is really severe Chiari-1 malformation. If I remember correctly, this was 19 or 20 millimeters below the level of frame of magnum. Anything over five millimeters, really think about it seriously. And uh, you see there's some distortion on the brain stem, and this patient required surgery. What we do is an occipital craniectomy, and I'll show you some pictures at the end. Uh, this next one, look at this one. This is way below the level of frame of magnum. Uh, once again, with distortion on the brain stem. <clears throat> and you see anteriorly, there's a little spur um, it's on the odontoid, and the spinal cord is being compressed, and this person was slightly spastic and ataxic and required decompression. So the neurosurgeon goes in and cuts off this little cerebellar tonsil. Here's another one, and this was about six or seven millimeters below the level of the frame of magnum. This person was totally asymptomatic, so we just followed them. They didn't really need surgery. It's touching the brain stem, but no real distortion. Here's a patient who had surgery. You see the blue arrow, it's pointed where the occipital bone was cut away. And, you know, it's called an occipital craniectomy. You see how wide that frame and magnum is. It gives this area a place to breathe. Sometimes they just do that and don't even trim off the cerebellar tonsil. But you can trim off that cerebellar tonsil and throw it in the trash. It didn't hurt a patient at all. Here's another one, that occipital craniectomy. You see the arrow is where the, you know, the bone was cut away. And it's just big, wide hole now in the frame and magnum. And the final one, same thing, occipital craniectomy. Here is a example of a just a normal frame and magnum. You see the blue arrow, arrow across the frame and magnum, and the cerebellar tonsil sticks above it. Uh, so this is a normal um, MRI, normal cerebellar tonsil. But that's what it's supposed to look like. And then this last one, just to compare to that one, is about five to six millimeters below the level of frame and magnum. And QR1 malformation, but you see there's a space, there's no compression on the brain stem. So that's the MRI of QR malformation. I get tons of consults for this. And there'll be some years that go by that I don't send one patient for surgery. If they're not symptomatic and there's not significant compression on the brain stem, rarely send these patients for surgery. 
you know, we have some sort of support groups in the South. I just, and there's even a guy at one of the major universities, I don't even want to mention the name of this university, but I'm sort of embarrassed at what they're doing. They believe QR malformation is the root of all evils, and this neurosurgeon operates on everybody that has it, even two or three or four. And we just see disaster from this particular institution. So be careful, get an opinion from a good neurosurgeon at one of the major universities in your area before you just let somebody go in there and trim off the back of your cerebral tonsil and do a simple craniectomy. Very few neurosurgeons in this country would do that if you didn't need it. It's generally a very reputable profession. So that's the MRI of Chiari 1 malformation. Like, comment, subscribe. I do answer every question within several days, more later.